Hey guys. So in the last lecture, we were discussing some waste heat recovery devices. So in that, we have seen various types of devices. Uh, that is, regenerators, then recuperators, and then shell and heat type, shell and tube type heat exchanger. So now. We will move ahead and see few more devices that is thermal wheel, economizer, waste heat boilers and etc. So let's start with thermal wheel. So all this device main goal is to recover the waste heat. So this device also will have the same objective. So this wheel is also known as heat wheels these thermal wheels are also known as heat wheels heat wheels so it is mostly used for low to medium temperature conditions as the word wheel implies there is one porous disc so there is a porous disc which rotates between two ducts so as you can see the these are the two ducts and between which there is a wheel porous wheel so these two ducts having hot and cold air on the either side so so here as you can see warm room exhaust air is being passed and here the cool outside air is being passed so the duct is partitioned into two parts as we can see here the center of the wheel and the axis of the rotation is on the line of partition so this partition line and the center of wheel are both on the same line so when the wheel rotates the hot air loses its sensible heat so when when the wheel rotates the hot air will lose its sensible heat and that heat is being transferred to the wheel having high heat carrying capacity so this wheel will carry the heat to the upward direction so on the other hand the cold air absorbs the heat from the wheel and gets heated so as we can see that the hot wheel so the downward pressure of the wheel carries the heat from below to the upper direction when it is when it is rotated so thermal wheel generally have efficiency of 85 percentage so the thermal wheel finds their application with a small temperature difference requirement So this is the concept of thermal wheel. So now we will see another type of waste heat recovery device that is economizer. So this is an we can say an accessory to the boiler where it is used to recover the waste heat so what happens in the economizer is that it will take it will take the heat from the flue gases and pass that heat to the inlet water so so that uh, the water will get heated and it will be the less fuel will be used uh through coal to burn the uh, to uh, generate steam so it is used in boiler so it is used in order to utilize the boiler feed water using the heat of flue gases so due to this heat utilization of flue gases the fuel required to heat the feed water 
is significantly reduced so economizer is used then for every 22 degree celsius rise in feed water temperature one percentage of saving of fuel in the boiler is achieved so if 22 degree celsius temperature is raised then one percentage is saved so air preheater can be used in place of economizer in order to heat the combustion air so air preheater can also be used so here in construction as you can see that water is being inlet that is cold water and it is passed through the series of sp uh, spiral tube so and in between this uh, the hot fluid gases are being passed through uh, through around the tubes so it is non contact type heat exchanger but it is transferring the heat very efficiently because uh, the water is passing through a very long distance so therefore so it is getting more and more uh, area is being exposed to the hot flue gases so there are more chances of transferring the heat very efficiently so in that way the water is then hot water is being uh, outlet is getting out so the same principle can be used for air preheater also then the next so the next device is waste heat boilers so waste heat boilers generally operate through exhausted steam of turbines so reciprocating engines and furnaces having medium range of temperature so waste heat boilers are generally those kind of water tube boilers in which the exhaust gases are allowed to pass over number of parallel tubes of water due to this pass exhaust gases over water tubes water will get evaporized and saturated steam is produced and this steam is collected in steam drum and it is further used as processing steam so in order to maximize the heat transfer and also make the boiler compact fin water tubes are used in the boiler so here as you can see uh, in the construction that hot waste gas is being inhaled from here and hot waste gas is getting exited from here now the feed water is getting entering is entered from this portion and the steam is getting exit getting exit from the here so the the flue gases move in this direction from here to here to here so in this way it comes in contact with uh, with the water so which is uh, which is moving so which is moving in this tubes so in this way the waste is heat is being utilized so this is the concept of waste heat boilers now next device is heat pipe so this is an important device which is used so heat pipe arrays are often used for air to air heat exchange so heat pipe is very efficient and compact heat exchanging devices so the vacuum is generated inside the pipe so 
so there's a pipe in which we are generating a vacuum there are main three parts of this pipe so number one is casing number two is working fluid and number three is wick so the casing of heat pipe is generally made of copper stainless steel or aluminium so the, these are the main three uh, material that is copper stainless steel or aluminium the wick is often a woven wire mesh that is composed of very small pores so the wick is often a woven a uh, woven wire mesh that is composed of very small pores which makes the outer layer porous and here the pore size is very much important because the wick operates under the principle of capillary action so now let's see the working so the casing is filled with the fluid creating a closed system so this casing is filled with the fluid creating a closed system one end of the tube is heated so here one end of the tube is heated and the other end is cooled so other end is so other end is cool so here this end is heated and this is cool so the heat source the evaporator causes the fluid to boil and turn to vapor this absorbing energy as heat this also creates a pressure difference that causes the vapor to flow towards the cooler end of the tube so this will uh, this will pass the liquid to move towards the cooler end so here the heat these are the heat evaporator working fluid this is the metal mesh with which acts as a return path for the liquid working fluid and this is a vaporized fluid condenses and gives up the heat so the heat source the evaporator causes the fluid to boil and turn into vapor this is absorbing energy as heat this also create this pressure difference that causes this will cause the vapor to flow towards the cooler end of the tube so once the vapor reaches the cool end of the tube the condenser the fluid changes phases again from vapor back to liquid so it changes phase from vapor back to a liquid releasing the energy as heat so the liquid returns to the hot evaporator end by means of wick so this is the wick this this portion is the wick so it will return back with the help of wick so that the liquid can repeat its process so this will help in repeating the process so the process is capable of transporting heat from hot region to cold region it requires no additional or external energy and can be manufactured to have any geometry or property desired so it doesn't require external energy and can be manufactured to have any geometry so it can be manufactured for any geometry so this is a very important device that is heat pipe so heat pipe is used in various industry applications so for construction there are three main parts is casing working fluid and wick and we use in the working of the heat pipe also then the next topic 
is a run around coil so the run around coil is run around coil is similar to the heat pipe exchanger this is the the heat pipe which we have seen the heat from the hot fluid is transferred to the colder fluid via an intermediate fluid known as the heat transfer fluid heat transfer fluid one coil of this closed loop is installed in the hot stream while the other is in the cold stream circulation of this fluid is maintained by means of circulating pump circulating pump it is more useful when hot and cold fluids are located far away from each other so if if there are very far then it is more useful and are not easily accessible heat recovery from ventilation air conditioning and low temperature heat recovery are major applications of the run around coil so this was the last device in energy saving devices and from the next lecture we will see cogeneration so i will just revise all the devices and topics under this heat uh waste heat recovery so in waste heat recovery we have seen the advantage is it reduces cost it reduces pollution the size is reduced oxygen equipment can be used then we have seen classification of source waste heat so from where we can get the waste heat so we have seen in the heat in flue gases in vapor streams in convective radiant loss from exterior equipment heat losses in providing chilled water and disposal of chilled water heat in gaseous liquid and liquid effluent leaving process etc then we have seen various commercially viable devices that is recuper sorry regenerator where heat is recovered in the form of a matrix so this this are the sorry this are the matrix through which the once the hot fluid is passed so the the matrix will absorb the heat and then cold fluid is passed so the cold fluid will uh, accept the heat which the matrix has absorbed so in that way the regenerator box then we have seen recuperators so and recuperators the uh, heat is transferred the at perpendicular that the air is passed in parallel direction where the exhaust gas is passed to perpendicular to the to the air passed so it's happen in perpendicular direction then we have seen the a uh, heat exchanger that is shell in tube heat exchanger here the uh, hot flue gases and water uh, are in non contact type heat exchanger it means there is no direct contact but through via pipes uh, it is being in contact so this is the shell in tube heat exchanger then we have seen today the thermal wheels so the hot and cold fluid is passed through the section and in between there is a wheel which transfers the heat to one another then we have seen economizer so in economizer also the water is being passed through a series of pipes which are connected in a spiral shape so that it is there its area is exposed more area is exposed to the uh, to the flue gases so in similar way air pretreater can also be used in waste in waste heat boilers so in waste heat boilers also the flue gases are passing in spiral ways and the hot water is being passed uh, in such through the pipe such a way that it comes in contact in direct contact with the uh, hot flue gases and the waste it is being recovered then we have seen today the heat pipe also heat pipe there are three three things is casing working flu, uh, casing sorry casing this is the casing the working fluid and the wick wick provides the return part to the fluid 
and uh, the casing is made up of copper stainless steel aluminium where the, where the wick is made up of bone wire mesh this is the heat pipe and then we have seen the turnaround coil is same as the heat pipe but the heat is being transferred via a hot transfer fluid in between so i hope you understood this topic and from the next lecture we will start co-generation so thank you very much